Hello everybody and welcome back to another how to satisfactory video and today I'm going to be showing you how to build and the general purpose or idea behind having an overflow style belt design in your factory. Now, the main purpose or idea of having a overflow belt design in your factory is, for the most part, you want to keep it simple. If, if you like keeping things simple, then you'll probably like the overflow design. Uh, if you like making things easy for yourself, you'll like it. It's super quick, there's a lot less math involved, and in my opinion, it personally just looks so much better. I just think having the nice straight line of just overflow, I just think it looks pretty. The reason it's simple is because you just connect one line to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on. And it's easy for the same reason because it doesn't really involve a whole lot of, you know, you take one splitter, you put it on, you take a belt and then put it out and into another splitter. And then take the belt again and put it into three more splitters to get the exact number you want. You don't have to do any of that. It's super straightforward. You just take one belt, connect it to a splitter, connect that belt to a splitter. We're going to get rid of this one. And just keep going on. Super easy. Super quick as well. The reason the math is easier is because you just need to figure out how much product you want to make or how much product you want to be intaking. And so for me, I'm inputting exactly the speed of a Mark III belt, which is 270, 270 resources per minute. So that would be, what is it, eight, nine, nine smelters? Yeah, nine. So it's nine smelters. So if you have nine smelters like me, you'll just take a, a Mark III 270 belt. And since each smelter takes 30 resources, it's going to be 30 here, 60, 90, 120. Let me start off in the middle here. All right, so it'll be 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, and 270. Now, since I knew I only needed 270 resources per minute, I just took a Mark III belt and I put it into a splitter here and put half of 270 into here and the other half going this way, so that'd be 135 each way. Put it into another splitter, split it up again, and I did that all the way down. Now, if you were to go all the way down to the end here, to this ninth smelter, it would be getting something like one or less resources per minute because you split 270 in half nine times. Now, when you first start up a, a system like this, it's gonna take a while for the final smelter to get its full capacity of 100 ore or 30 ore per minute. But since that one all the way down at the start is receiving 135 per minute and it only takes 30 per minute, it'll fill up. Same, 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 all the way down until this, this last one right here receives exactly 30 per minute constantly. Now if I had built constructor, constructors and storage units to construct and build something up, it would be continuously building or producing product at a 100% efficient rate. I'll be doing a overflow versus load balance video in the future. And that video will explain the differences between overflow and load balancing, but they both provide after, for overflow, after a short period of time, once all of the, per, fuck, once all of the smelters once all of these smelters reach their capacity it is 100 percent efficient where versus a load balance system it will start out at being 100 percent efficient now if you wanted to build your own for say copper or limestone or bauxite or literally any other type of material oil oil can work but that is a different type of system that's going to be a piped system but if you wanted to build your own, and say you only wanted to use three smelters or four smelters. Now with three smelters, it'll be a little bit more difficult because you'll be taking in 90 resources per minute. So you will have to use a 
120 belt versus a 60 belt if you just wanted to do two. But if you do say three, you will only need a 120 belt from your input to the first smelter because then it'll split from 90 resources per minute into 45. So you'll have 45 resources coming in, or excuse me, 90 resources coming in to feed your three smelters at 30 ore per minute. And then you'll split it off with a 120 belt coming in to the first smelter. And then it'll split into 45, 45. And you'll really only need a 120 belt coming from here into the splitter. And then you'll need a 60 belt or Mark I going into the smelter and into the next splitter. And then same thing over here for the other two smelters. Now, if you wanted to, you could overflow your iron ingots into all of your constructors as well. But if you know that, say you're making iron plates for all of them, which will need an input of 30 iron ore per minute to make 20 iron plates per minute, you can just connect them straight into the constructor, just like this, and it'll input your 30 ingots per minute that you need to make 20 iron plates per minute. But if you knew that the production of 270 iron ingots per minute was the exact consumption of all of your constructors, which hopefully it is, you could also do a overflow system just like you did in the back. Now I had to give myself a little bit more room in my factory room here, in my little iron production room. Now another good reason that you would maybe want to merge all of your iron ingots together is that maybe you just have a small iron factory right here, say I close this off at this, this wall here, so here I'll... So say I wanted to close off this factory at this line right here and just have a bunch of iron smelters here and then I wanted to add this iron ingot onto a main bus with my copper ingots and my caterium ingots and all my other ingots onto a main bus and then bus it over to another factory where I do all my constructing or just another part of my factory. Now that is one of the only good ideas I could assume you would want to do with your iron ingots by doing like a little overflow method like this it to me it seems kind of silly to overflow it like this and then do a bunch of constructors right here and overflow your constructors too because in my head i would just map out at that point i would map out what it would make the most sense for my constructors up here but for now we'll just say we busted over to another factory all right now just for simplicity i kept all of these nine constructors making iron plates now, you wouldn't have to do an overflow style like I did here in the middle, uh, back here, if you were to set this up exactly like how I did. So, you wouldn't have to take all of your ingots into one line and then split them back out into an overflow style method. Again, you could just route them directly from your smelters to your constructors because the smelters output 30 ingots per minute. But if you wanted to do something else with those ingots, you could definitely overflow it into some other factory. And then you could, uh, you could, if you wanted to, still overflow it like how I did here. Sorry, I'm trying to get a better view. Still, you could still overflow it like this if you brought it to another factory just so that you wouldn't have to take up all kinds of room, splitting it up nice and even. And over time, your efficiency will go to 100% efficiency. It just takes some time to get it there, especially since your first items or smelters or constructors, whatever you're using, will be consuming a lot of the first ores or ingots. Now you'll notice up here that I took these four constructors and these four constructors and merged them into this ninth constructor here onto one line. Now we're not going to be outputting 270 plates per minute. We're only going to be outputting 180 plates per minute, but we still need that 270 line because it's the Mark III and the Mark II can only do 120. If you learned something in this video, go ahead and leave me a like. And if you want more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell so that you can get more, to, more notifications on when I upload. And if you want me to go into more depth on overflow style uh, conveyor slash busing systems like say for example, four constructors into an assembler or four constructors and an assembler into manufacturer or any type of organization that you can have in an overflow style factory, 
let me know down in the comments so I can make that video for you. Or if you have any other questions, please leave it down in the comments and I will answer your question, maybe with a video even, or just in the comments if it's a simple question. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!